What's going on guys, welcome to another Six Hardware Shop video. In today's video, I'm going to be making some custom baseboards and some custom quarter round for these sections right here that I can't really buy. Uh, and all the stores are closed and I don't want to buy them. We have some wood, we have some tools, so uh, let's do it ourselves. First thing I did was take measurements of the existing baseboard. And this baseboard is set a little higher because it's going to be sitting on top of the tile. But I still want the tops to line up perfectly. I ended up getting a measurement of six and a half inches high and three quarters wide. So I dug through my lumber pile looking for a piece of wood that would work perfectly for this application. It had to be a piece of pine that could be planed down to the right thickness. So it couldn't have any wood rot and it couldn't have too many knots. With my piece selected, I milled it to the proper dimensions. First I ran both sides through the planer, flattening it and getting it down to 3 quarter inch. I then jointed one edge, set my table saw to 6.5 inches, then ran the board through the table saw with the jointed edge against the fence. I ripped the offcut down to 5 eighths of an inch, which I'd be using later for the custom quarter end. So I'm a little blessed in the fact that I have two miter saws, because this one's set up perfectly for 90 degrees, 90 degrees, uh, it's a very square setup. This one here I'm going to set up on a 45, uh, so that way I can have nice clean mitered edges where the, uh, the baseboard's going to come together. And then if I need to cut the miter one way or the other, all I have to do is flip the board around as opposed to changing any of the saw setups. So once everything's perfect, it's going to stay perfect. So in case that didn't make sense, I'm setting up one miter saw at 45 degree angle and one at a 90 degree angle, and I'm gonna leave them as is so I never have to change any of the settings on the saws. You might notice later in the video, I actually did switch the setup. So the DeWalt is doing 90 degrees and the Hitachi's cutting the miters. The only real reason is the DeWalt wasn't able to go through the entire board set at a 45 degree angle. Now would be a good time to point out that if you guys have any questions or want clarification on anything, just ask in the comment sections below. All the questions go to my phone and I'll be able to get back to you pretty quickly. The trick to doing proper baseboard is finesse. Every minute cut counts, every small adjustment makes a difference, and you want to creep up on everything before you get to your final dimensions. So this is clearly six six and a sixteenth long from the flat face to the inside of the miter is going to be six and a sixteenth long then if you look down here we have three quarter inch measurement but up at the top we have slightly less than three quarters by a sixteenth so we're gonna to have to either take a sander or a planer and just shave a tad bit off this corner we're gonna make sure this piece, this piece and this piece fit perfectly before we even get to staining. Then we'll stain them and nail them all in at the very end. So I picked this guy to show you because it's the hardest one. What I did is I cut the miter first and I cut it a little long. That way I could sneak up on the final fitment by cutting the 90 degree edge shorter and shorter. The way to cut like next to nothing off your board is bring your blade all the way down line your piece of work up, pull it back, and give it just a little squeeze so the teeth are just touching right here. And that's gonna take off like half a millimeter. So here's the first cut, and it's not terrible, but there's that discrepancy I was talking about. So we're just gonna put a small tick mark right here. And we should be able to sand this 16th, just something nice and casual like that to make it blend better. So I don't actually have any fine woodworking tools. And a set of really nice chisels and a sharpener is definitely going on my list. But honestly, I've done this in the bush to make shavings to start a fire, and I figured this was a pretty good method. And it ended up working out really well. I gave it a quick stand with 220 grit at the end, and I think it blended pretty nicely. That's not bad. This corner's blended in a bit now. Anyways, it's not obvious. 
Then we have a perfect miter lining up right on this corner here. Don't worry about any gaps at the bottom because the quarter round will cover that. So let's go and take our second measurement. And I know that there's going to be a door frame here later, so I'm not too worried about the length of this one. But we're going to go with four and an eighth. To get more precise markings, I recommend using a mechanical pencil. And using a square and marking your line across the entire board always helps. So the fit's pretty much perfect. We just have this little, little, little step out here. So we have this little gap right here that's probably about th 3 16 of an inch. So we're just going to cut a very short dado in here. Actually, you know what? It can actually go right through the miter because it's on the inside. So to take the perfect measurement, we're just going to put it on top. We're going to go like this. And then to get the height, just line it up on the tile. Go a little higher just for fudge factor. And we'll cut that out on the table saw. We didn't actually take any measurements and we don't really need to. We just need to set our fence to the right height, lock it in, saw blade to the right height, and we can make a bunch of passes starting here working outwards. If you have a miter gauge, that works too. And there's our dado. Let's check that fitment. That is pretty darn good. And our miter is pretty darn clean. So let's go stain that and nail it on. For stain, I'm using Varathane's Aged Wood Accelerator. It's the same stain that I used on the timber beams. And even though that's beech and this is pine, it should still look extremely similar. So I'm just gonna tack in these pieces with my 18 gauge brad nailer. I'm gonna come back and nail them in with my 16 gauge finish nailer. Make sure everything lines up perfectly. Looks okay to me. Make sure it's exactly where we want it. Just a couple nails. It's a high traffic area. So this board is, it has the potential to get a lot of abuse. Larger and longer nails are gonna help against that. So that's basically how to do it. I'm just gonna run through all the others really quickly and then we'll come right back to the quarter round. So for the custom quarter round, I used a piece of pine. It's an off cut from the baseboard that we were already using. I cut it to just over half an inch and it matches up really, really close to the size of the quarter round I'm using elsewhere. And I have my router here upside down, locked into this jaw horse, not going anywhere. I don't have a router table, so that's what it is. And we're just gonna route a uh, half inch round over through here. Hopefully it matches up with the quarter round we're already using, or if not, hopefully we can finesse it so it's really close. I slightly overcut the first piece, stained it and nailed it into place so I could get exact measurements on the second piece. I use pretty much the same method as before, except the miter can be cut by turning the saw as opposed to tilting it. I first cut a small piece off the end where the router had skipped, then measured out to the inside point of the miter and made the cut. Once I knew the fit was perfect, I could stain it and nail it into place. From there, just rinse and repeat till the job's done. I really enjoyed doing this project. It's always fun when you get to learn new skills and hone in current ones. If you guys want to see how I laid down this tile and completely changed the front entrance of my house, subscribe, that video's coming real soon. 
Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.